Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Now, I just did an analog pocket review, and in the review, I whined about the fact that they didn't have any jailbroken cores available for the device yet. And so, in order to play games on the pocket, you had to use the original cartridges or a flash cart, or you could use Game Boy Studio Pocket files for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Well, less than a week after making my video, Analog updated their firmware to allow what they call Open FPGA. And there are several cores that are already available for testing and use. So far, we're able to play Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, as well as Neo Geo ROMs directly onto the device via the SD card. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set all that up in case you have an analog pocket or you're interested in buying one. Now, full disclosure, there are some limitations with each of these cores, and so it's not going to be a perfect gameplay experience. For example, the Neo Geo core has a lot of work to go. It's still in the alpha build right now, and I would say that only about a third of the Neo Geo games are going to be playable as of today. But all told, there's a lot of great updates including save states available now for the analog pocket, and we finally get a look at what 4x3 content looks like on this 10x9 display. And so grab your favorite drink or maybe some popcorn and let's dig right into it. Now, as always, I'll have a written guide in the video description to walk you through all this, and this video is going to accompany that. Either way, the first thing we want to do is update the firmware on the Analog Pocket. To do that, go to the Analog Support page, then select Pocket, and then you'll find the download link for the latest firmware beta right there. Now, we're going to do this on a blank SD card. We're starting from scratch. So I have an XFAT formatted card right here, nothing on it. And all you have to do is just move over that firmware bin file over onto that blank SD card. From there, just go ahead and eject the SD card, put it into your device, and it'll walk you through the firmware update. Now, I didn't film that part of it, so I can't show it off here, but it is super simple. Next, just power down your device and then plug the SD card back in. Now, you'll see that the card has been populated with a bunch of folders. First thing, you can go ahead and delete that firmware bin file. We're not going to need it anymore. Now, let's start loading up those cores. Now, the first two cores were made by a developer under the name of Spiritualized, and these came out the same day as the firmware update did. And I'll have links to all this in my written guide, but basically you just want to go to their GitHub pages and then go to the releases page and then just download the latest zip from their releases. Right now we're on version 1.0, but it will update in the future. The Game Boy and Game Boy Color will be just one core and then Game Boy Advance will be its own core as well. Finally, we're going to do the same for the Neo Geo, but this is a different developer and different link. And again, this will be in the written guide. But same story here, go to the releases page, open up the assets and then download the latest zip. Okay, once you have those three files downloaded, we're ready to add them to our SD card. First thing you want to do is unzip each of these. So you can just go ahead and right click here, and then you can use 7-zip or WinRAR to unzip these into their own folder. Once you're done doing all that extraction, then we can just go ahead and move everything over. We'll start with the Game Boy Advance one. Within this folder, you're going to find a bunch of subfolders. You can just grab all of them, minus that readme file, and then drag them into the root directory of your SD card. It'll place everything where it needs to go. And so we can do the same thing here with the Game Boy, Game Boy Color cores. Just don't take that readme file. And same thing with the Neo Geo one as well. Okay, and that's it. We've installed all the cores. I want to call them emulators, but I know someone's going to kill me for that. Either way, now it's time to add the BIOS files as well as the ROM files. Now, it's a little bit tricky for this, and of course, you need to source your own BIOS files, but you're going to need the Game Boy Advance BIOS file as well as the Game Boy Color one. As of right now, the original Game Boy BIOS file does not work within that core. Now, for Neo Geo, we only need two files from your typical BIOS zip file. What you'll want to do here is open up the zip file, and then we're going to pull the very top one here, the 000 low low file, and then that first uni BIOS file. And again, all these are listed in the written guide as well. So all you want to do is extract these two files, and then put them in that same folder. After that, you're done. You can close out of the zip file. In fact, you can even just delete that file out of the directory. Next, you're going to want to have your ROM files, and you have to get these on your own as well, but I recommend making your own folder for each of these. And if they're zipped, I would recommend unzipping them into their original format. Now, Neo Geo is a little bit different. You can't use the typical MAME or Final Burn Neo ROMs that are usually in a .zip file. Instead, you're going to have to use an uncompressed format, which is usually labeled as DarkSoft. And again, you're going to be on your own to find your own files for this, but I would recommend searching for the word Darksoft within your favorite archive and you should find it. Either way, these are going to come uncompressed, so they won't be in a zip format. Instead, they'll have their own subfolder. And within each of those folders, this is what the file system will look like. So it might take a little bit of digging to find the correct format, but that's what you need to find. Okay, now that we've had a look at each of the ROM files, let's actually start moving them over onto the SD card. We'll start with the easiest one first and then kind of work our way up in complexity. 
Now the place you're going to add the BIOS and ROM files will be found within the Assets folder, and within here you'll find your three different cores. We'll go into Game Boy Advance and then Common. Now within here we want to move that BIOS file, so we're going to find the Game Boy Advance BIOS here and then move it over. And then for this core, the ROMs go in that same folder as well. So open up your Game Boy Advance folder here, grab all your files, then copy them over to the Common folder within the SD card. And there you go, Game Boy Advance is now done. Let's move on to something a little bit more complex. We'll go into the Game Boy Color Core, then the Common Folder, and then move over our Game Boy Color BIOS. Now here you could just throw all of your ROMs into that same directory as well, but I recommend using specific folders for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. That way you'll keep them separated as you're browsing later on. But yeah, that's it. We're actually done with those as well. Super simple. Finally, let's do Neo Geo. We're going to go into the Neo Geo folder here within Assets, then Common. And there will be some files in here already. I recommend not messing with these at all. It has some pre-made folders, but I found that they created more problems than anything for me. Instead, what we're going to do is move over those two BIOS files that we extracted earlier. And then we'll go into our Neo Geo folder and grab all those subfolders and move them over as well. Now, you could move over like 200 of these if you wanted, but I would recommend only doing a handful at a time to make sure they're all going to work. And there you go, we're actually done at this point. I do want to point out the fact that you can still use that whole Game Boy Studio Pocket Files trick like I showed in my review. And so if you wanted to load Game Boy and Game Boy Color games directly onto the SD card via this method, you can do that as well. And you may still be interested in doing that, and I'll show you why here later in this video. For now, let's move on to the device itself. So let's eject the SD card and put it into the analog pocket. Now that we're all powered up, let's go into the Open FPGA section. And within here, you can see all four of those cores are showing up. And so let's start with the Game Boy Core first. It'll show a little logo here, then Run. And then we can choose between Game Boy and Game Boy Color files. Now here's where it gets interesting. Even Game Boy files will load with the Game Boy Color BIOS. And what that means is that it's thinking that it's playing within the Game Boy Color, so it is going to try to colorize all of your Game Boy games. And unfortunately, all of those display tricks that you can do when using an original cartridge or the Game Boy Studio app just won't work here. For example, we go into the settings and we try to change the display mode, nothing will happen. And so, unfortunately, things like an LCD grid or a DMG color style aren't going to be possible when you're using ROMs like this. Hopefully this is something that will get updated in the core later on in the future, but for now, let me show you one trick you can do to improve the gameplay. And so for this, we're going to close out of the game and then jump right back into it. So same process here, open up the core, then pick your game. However, when that Game Boy Color BIOS logo shows up, press B and left at the same time. What that will do is it'll turn it into black and white mode. And so unfortunately, you're not going to get some sweet DMG colorization or anything else like that, but I do think that the black and white is a little bit more true to the original console. Okay, so now let's try some Game Boy Color games. Same thing here, we're going to go with Game Boy Color, then Run, and then Game Boy Color Folder, and then pick our game. And just like with the Game Boy ROMs, it's going to boot the Game Boy Color BIOS. Now, if you've ever done any sort of Game Boy Color emulation, you know that out of the box, it's going to be very saturated. And unfortunately, that's how it looks in the Game Boy Color Core. On the left here, you can see what it looks like when I'm running the ROM from the SD card. And on the right, you can see what it looks like when I'm using a Game Boy Studio Pocket file with the original Game Boy Color preset. So on the right is what it'll look like when you're playing a cartridge or a Game Boy Studio Pocket file. And on the left is how it's going to look when you're using the Game Boy Color Core. Now personally, I really prefer the right side over the left, but honestly, after I'm playing for a few minutes, I stop noticing the amount of saturation. And so your mileage may vary, but you do have these two options when it comes to Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Personally, I'm going to be sticking with the Game Boy Studio Pocket Files. Now still using the core here, I do want to mention that save states work across the board as well. To get that to work, you want to press the analog button and up at the same time. And this is also going to work with your cartridge as well as Game Boy Studio files too. And so now if you go into the memory section, you will see your save states right here. And you're limited to a total of 128 memory slots per core. And to load them up, it's as simple as just going in here and selecting load. And you can access your save states from within the game as you're playing it, but you can also quit out of the game, open it back up, and then reload that memory as well. But one note here, you can't load a core for one game while playing a different game. It has to be the exact same game. Also of note, within each of these cores, it does have in-game saves as well, as you can see right here. So across the board, you have a lot of options when it comes to saving now, which is great. One other thing to mention about the Game Boy Game Boy Color core is that all of the ROM hacks will also work with this as well, as long as they run with original hardware too. So 
things like Pokemon Prism or Super Mario Land 2 DX are going to work great. And honestly, the amount of oversaturation really is going to depend on the game. For example, with this one here, it actually looks really awesome. But for others, it may be a little bit jarring, especially if you're used to the original look of the screen. Okay, that's it for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Let's move on to Game Boy Advance. This one's a little bit simpler to boot up because you just go into Game Boy Advance and then pick your game. And luckily, all those colorization issues that happen with Game Boy and Game Boy Color are not present on Game Boy Advance at all. It's going to load the Game Boy Advance BIOS and the games are going to look excellent. Previously, for Game Boy Advance, I've been using my original cartridges as well as my EverDrive flash card. And you know, this thing costs something like $80 altogether, and it was great at the time, but one of the things that bothered me about using Game Boy Advance cartridges was that it got in the way of my fingers as I was playing the games. And so this Game Boy Advance Core is kind of the best of both worlds. The games look amazing, and you don't have to have a game in the slot. What that means is there's going to be plenty of space for your fingers up top as you're playing a game. And to me, this is perfect. It improves the ergonomics by a ton. And so while I'm going to be using the Game Boy Studio files for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, when it comes to Game Boy Advance, I'm totally going to be using this core because it allows me to have better ergonomics. So across the board, I'm a huge fan of this Game Boy Advance core. But to be honest, the one that excited me the most was the Neo Geo one. So let's test that one out next. Same story here, we're going to go into Neo Geo and then run, and then within here you'll find each of your subfolders. And if you've loaded up the correct Neo Geo format, that dark soft file system that I talked about earlier, when you open up a folder it'll show one of those files. What you have to do is select that file, then go back into that folder, select another one of those files, and then just kind of keep going about five or six times. And after you've loaded that last one, you'll see a little menu bar here on the bottom as it starts to load up the game. And after that, you'll be good to go. Initially, it's going to load you into the BIOS menu. And within here, it's going to ask you to set your region as well as whether or not it's going to be an arcade or a home console. And after you've made those choices, the game is going to boot right up. And this is super awesome. Now, right off the bat, you're probably going to find that there are going to be some glitches with certain games. Some might not boot at all. But for example, Art of Fighting has some visual glitches and the sound is also wonky too. I'll turn up the volume here so you can get a taste of it. So yeah, obviously that's not ideal, but still it's really thrilling to be able to see Neo Geo playing on this device in the first place. And honestly, probably one of my favorite things about this is it gives us an indication of what 4x3 systems are going to look like when we actually get more of these cores running on the analog pocket. And honestly, it doesn't look half bad. There's a little bit of letterboxing here at the top and the bottom, but no complaints here. Like I said in my review, I kind of wish that they had gone with a 4x3 display in the first place, especially considering that only the Game Boy and Game Boy Color have a 10x9 aspect ratio. However, I do think the letterboxing here is just fine, and it'll probably look even better if you have a black model analog pocket because it won't be as distracting. Now, a lot of people who are big Neo Geo fans are probably going to love this fact, but I did want to make it known that these games are going to play like they are on the original hardware, which means that some games, for example Metal Slug X, are going to have a lot of slowdown like they did in the original arcade. And I think across the board, people who are looking for that authentic arcade experience are probably going to love it. But I did want to make note of it for those of you who may not be familiar with that original arcade feel. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I wanted to show you real quick how to set up cores and how to get them running on the analog pocket. And I just want to make a point here, this is very much so in its infancy. I think that several months from now we're going to have even more cores available and I think they're going to run better too. Personally, I'm super excited for NES, Genesis, and Super Nintendo. Although I do expect that the Super Nintendo core process is going to be pretty complex given the amount of different graphics chips and everything else that were available in that system. Either way, I'm liking my analog pocket a lot more than I did just a few few days ago, which is a great sign. And honestly, I'm pretty excited to see what it's going to look like six months from now too. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.